Learning how to play number lore is very easy. The players are moving through a magic house and are meeting fairy tale characters who live on each floor. From the educational point of view, the game allows children to move gradually from understanding the concepts of numerical series and how they work to the operations of mental addition and subtraction. Number Law is designed for children from 4 to 10 years old, and you can play by using different kinds of rules depending on the player's age. I'll tell you about the basic rules and explain how you can adopt them to play with children of different ages. And the rules are simple. All you have to do is get rid of all the cards in your hands and receive a rewarding star. The player who collects the stars first wins. Before you start, you have to remove the balloon cards with a blue mark from the deck. Deal six cards to each player and see that all the players have at least one floor card and redeal the cards if a player receives balloon cards only. Randomly take one floor and one balloon card from the deck and place them face up in the center. See that the balloon card has a number on it and now you can start playing. The youngest player starts and the turn moves clockwise to the next player. The number on the balloon card in the center tells the player which of his cards he can play. Here the player can play a 5, an 8 or a 2. As you can see, the card you play has to be added or equal to or subtracted from the number on the balloon in the center. During your turn, you are allowed to place any of your ball cards on the ball card pile in the center of the table. With any new ball card being placed in the center, the condition changes and you have to look for a new sum corresponding to the number on the new ball card. As a result, the player can make as many sums as he can, but note that at least one floor card has to be played. Let's see what player number one can do. So he's playing a five and another five. Then he places an eight, which is three plus five. Now he can place an eight, a five or a one, since eight plus three is 11, which in this game means number one. The player has no such cards, but he has a balloon card with the number one on it. The player places that balloon card on top of the balloon deck in the center and the condition changes. Now the player can place the floor card number seven as eight minus one equals seven. Now the player is left with only a balloon card, which he can also place on top of the deck in the center. Now that the player has played all his cards, he received a rewarding star and takes six new cards from the main deck. The options of player number two are not so good. Now he can play a five, seven or a nine, but he has neither of these cards and the balloon card with a one won't change his position. In this case, the player is taking two additional cards from the main deck. Our player is taking two new cards. Now he can play the seventh floor and all of his ball cards. Now he has no suitable cards and the turn moves to the next player. The game continues until one of the players collects three or five stars depending on the number of players. When you're out of cards to take, just use the ones from the main deck, shuffle them well and continue the game. The game contains a couple of special cards. The knight cards can be used as regular cards during your turn, but the knight card also gives you the right to take over another player's turn, but only if the knight card matches both the balloon and the floor card. After taking over another player's turn, the game continues and the turn moves to the next player clockwise. Another special card is the nearest floors card. While this card is on top of the balls deck, you can play floor cards with the same number as the open floors cards or one or two floors above or below. For example, if the five floors card is open, you can play three, four, five, six or seven floors cards. Please note that each new floors card played will have different nearest floors. The special cards, any odd or even floor, mean that while this card is on top of the balls deck, you can put down any even card if the even ball card is open, or any odd cards if the dice on the open card shows an odd number. Then there is the skip a go card, which means that if you finished your turn and left this card on top of the ball stack, then the next player has to take two cards from the pile and skip his turn. While this card is on top, only floor cards with the same number can be played. So now let's have a look at the simplified rules for younger children. Here the players have to subtract and add up to three floors. So players take turns clockwise and the rest of the rules are the same as the first version of the game. To play according to these rules, remove the knight cards and the cards with a red dot from the deck. The most simple rules for the youngest players of the game will teach them the sequences of numbers going forwards and backwards, which is the basis for the formation of all further arithmetic skills. For this version we will need day cards only and the knight's ball cards are removed from the game. The players are dealt six cards and two cards are randomly chosen to be placed in the center. The players take turns clockwise and the youngest player starts. 
During your turn, you can place a suitable card on top of the card in the middle of the table. You can play your floors cards with the same or nearest number as the open top cards. For example, when the floor card 4 is open, you can play either 4, 3 or 5. So we play a 5 and a 5 again and a 2 on 1. Now we are out of chances and the turn moves to the next player. The second player plays a 2 on 2 and after it a 1 and then a 0 and a 9 because 0 means 10. The 6 which is left is played on the 5 and the player runs out of cards and receives a star. If a player has no suitable cards to play, he takes two additional ones just like in the main version of the rules and tries to make a sum again. So that's all, enjoy the game!